A highly qualified pianist with perfect pitch, she has seen her female choral ensemble Soul Sounds reach global recognition. She also has a parallel career in law, but is recognized as one of the country's finest purveyors of Western style music. ETV Power Women proudly presents Soundry David Rodrigo. Hi and welcome to ETV Power Women. Um, on today's show we have a renowned pianist, the founder of Soul Sound, and she's also a Deputy Director of the Sark Cultural Program. Um, I'm sure she needs no introduction, um, but for those of you who haven't quite figured it out yet, we're very, very pleased to have Soundry David Rodrigo on the show with us today. Hi Soundry, hi, and Minoli. hi, welcome to the show. Nice to be here. <laughs> Soundry, you've picked such interesting and diverse, if you like, um, mm -hmm. paths, you know, one music, one law. Um, okay. Could you just tell us a little bit about how you got into both, actually? Okay, music has been a passion. Right. And also, I might say that my grandfather was an organist. Yeah. My mom was a teacher. Okay. My father says he can sing. <laughs> and his parents, too, were apparently okay. musicians. So it's, it's a family Yeah, thing. and it's a passion, and I yeah. kind of grew up listening to music, church, my mother teaching, yeah. so it was inevitable that I would get into music. So, so a real childhood passion. Yeah, and yeah. I, I used to just sit at the piano, play, oh. listen to my grandfather. Okay. So that was just a passion. Yeah. And as far as law was concerned, I was also in school, I don't know, I thought I was very ambitious. Right. And I wanted to do law, I don't yeah. know why, because there aren't any lawyers in my immediate family members. Right. So I always wanted to do law. And it so happened that I got admission into university. Yeah. So um, that was how it happened. And, you know, I mean, you sort of specialize in a very specific field, really. I mean, yeah. intellectual property rights and entertainment law. Mm -hmm. Do you think that happened as a result of your being exposed to so much culture and music? Do you feel that the two, maybe, there was some sort of... Yeah, how it happened was it was uh, one of the subjects I had to choose from when I was at Colombo Law Faculty. Right. And not many people chose that. Yeah, and when I did choose that, copyright especially was something that really interested me okay. because of the connection, obviously, yeah. to music. So from then on, I wanted to do my master's and specialize. Oh, and of course, I loved entertainment law. Yeah, it must have been because, fascinating. Yeah, it's it one was. of those branches of law yeah, that's just... It was just amazing, yeah. the experience working with musicians, yeah. contracts. Uh, even TV shows, yeah. um, copyright infringement, subconscious copying of music. Okay. So it's it was really very interesting, yeah. but possibly an area that hasn't caught up yet in Sri Lanka. Right. But do you see a lot of scope for that now with all these sort of new artists Yeah, hopefully, on but I just feel also artists are still not aware of their rights. Okay. So, and you know, being an artist, I also know that the yeah. passion is the main thing, thing. your love yeah. for music. So you very often ignore the legalities involved. Right. So I don't think uh, they still think that way, that they, their rights should be protected. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Sandri, tell us a little bit about Soul Sounds and how that came to be. Yeah, another passion. <laughs> so I did my schooling at Holy Family Convent, yeah. Pamela Pitya. I left school, went to England to do my music. Yeah. And when I came back, the school needed somebody to train the choir. Right. And so I began training the school choir. Uh, they were very good and I thought it was time they so, entered uh, a competition internationally. Yeah. No one had done it then. Yeah. And I thought it was just crazy of me to even think of uh, that. There was a conductor who came down to conduct the symphony orchestra, a friend of mine, yeah. Mr. Gregory Rose. I got him to hear the choir and he said, well, I feel they're good enough. Yeah. Send in an audition tape. Right. So we sent this uh, CD to Wales. Yeah. They got accepted. Wonderful. We went there. We were placed, I think, first runners up in the youth choir category. How incredible yeah, is it, that? It's, it's, I don't know how it happened, but it happened. <laughs> we came back, and the girls who were then in the choir were unfortunately leaving school. Okay. So we couldn't continue singing under the banner of Holy Family right. Convent. Yeah. So then uh, that's how Soul Sounds happened. And so these girls were fa passionate about singing. Yeah. They wanted to continue singing. So we just did it for fun. I mean, we still do it for fun. It's yeah. just that now we love music so much, it's become a passion. Yeah. We travel quite a bit. Yeah, and you'll have been so, incredibly successful. Yeah, You've and it's not limited awards. to girls from the right. same school. So yeah. we've got it's open to, uh, yeah. Bridgetians, so it's opening up. Yeah. And I mean, 
you've been placed, you know, you've had gold medals, you've had silver medals. Tell us what it was like, you know, the first time that you actually went out into a competition, apart from, you know, okay. Wales. Your yeah, after Wales, actually, we traveled before we actually went for the first competition. Right. We were invited to sing for a festival in India. Okay. So that was the first international exposure as had. Soul Sounds. Yeah. Uh, that was fun and also what I realized it was very often foreigners and right. um, uh, people abroad really appreciate okay. the singing because sometimes they don't even expect Sri Lankans to speak English. Right. <laughs> so they're like, okay, so now they're singing and I mean uh, they really appreciate it. Yeah. Not to say that Sri Lankans also don't appreciate it, yeah. they do. It's just that it's nice when you're in foreign soil and somebody else appreciating. It brings a lot of pride to your country. Yeah, no, absolutely. So that was India. And then we entered for the World Choir Games in China. Uh -huh. And there we were exposed to a lot of other talent. Yeah. I mean, you just wake up. I mean, you might be the best here, uh, yeah. but when you're out there, you have to work ever so much harder. Yeah. So it was a good learning experience for right. us. A lot of uh, foreign choirs, yeah. choirs from the States. There was one particular choir from uh, the USA that was really good. Yeah. They kind of taught us what gospel was all about okay. initially. Uh, so that experience was good and yeah. I, I think it was great that we won two silver medals then. Yeah. I mean, After that it incredible. was just, uh, we just wanted to do our best yeah. uh, thereafter. And, and has the choir expanded significantly from when you started? Do you have uh, a lot have more been, people? There uh, have been some dropouts because uh, it's a lot of commitment. Yeah, I can imagine. There are girls getting married like right. me, they're juggling uh, careers. Family. And for us music is, will always be a passion. We don't yeah. want to particularly make a career out of it. Yeah. Uh, so those who couldn't cope, obviously, for personal Perhaps, reasons, yeah. left. But the core body is still remain. New Wonderful. ones have come in, yeah. and it's like second family to all of us. Wonderful. Which actually leads me on to ask you. Um, basically, I mean, you apart from soul sounds, mm. I mean, you're a renowned pianist. You've mm. played with the the Sri Lankan Symphony Orchestra. Yeah. I mean, what was that like? I mean, was this your sort of first real big performance as a pianist, or have you, you know, had you had many before? Okay. Then? So what happened was um, I left school and I got a scholarship to study in England at the yeah, College of Music. Yeah. Uh, I went there. There again, it's, it was an eye-opener. Like right. I said, there was, like talent all over. You get the Japanese with amazing technique, yeah. the Greek with so much emotion and musicality in their performance that you feel you're just nobody there. <laughs> So I really had to work a lot, yeah. work hard. It must have been uh, an incredible experience. Yeah, it was though. great. Of course, I missed home a lot, but yeah. it was still great being with so many musicians. Yeah. So much so that I didn't want to come back and do my law. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so um, my piano performance there was um, a great experience, and there were lots of concerts I had to perform as part of my whole course. Right. So that was. Uh, probably some of my biggest performances because you're playing in England where there are so many great musicians. Yeah, so that was probably the toughest. But I've also had some great teachers locally. Yeah. I mean, my first teacher was Mary Billy Moria, I mean, right. she's no okay. more. Yeah. But she was probably the best teachers around here yeah. at that time. And then, of course, my role model and my idol, Ramya Delivera yes. Pereira, yeah. an amazing pianist herself. So, I mean, they've nurtured me, guided me. They still do. I mean, yeah. um, Randy Ramya still does. Yeah. So, um, the performance with the symphony orchestra was big because it was the first concerto right. I played. That was first for a concerto competition here. Okay. Which myself with two others won. Yeah. And then, of course, I've been invited to play back here with the orchestra as well as an orchestra in Bombay. Wonderful. Sometimes I do miss uh, playing more solo performances because I'm so caught up with choir and yeah, work, but when the opportunities do come along, mm. I grab it and I enjoy working. Right, well we're going to take a little break there. Um, so for all of you watching at home, don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more coming up with Soundry on ETV, your lifestyle channel. We'll see you soon. Hi, and welcome back to ETV Power Women. Uh, we're here today with Soundry David Rodrigo, and we've been having a wonderful chat in the first part of the show. Um, Soundry, I just want to ask you, you know, I mean, we touched on life at the Royal College of Music mm -hmm. in London uh, just before, before we went to a break. Um, tell me a little bit about how you got in and, you know, the whole application process of okay. it and um, what so made you choose that school? I mean, apart from it being 
probably yeah, one I of the best. I did apply to the Royal Academy of Music okay. and the Royal College of Music. Yeah. And I didn't want to send an audition tape, so I went there for auditions. Okay. I remember it was a cold December. Yeah. I traveled <laughs> all on my own. And I went to England and auditioned. Yeah. So uh, the academy offered me, like, I think a four year course, which I didn't want to take. Okay. Because I had already got in law entrance right. at university yeah. here. And the Royal College gave me a postgraduate course okay, opportunity. So, so I took that. Yeah. Um, it was tough. Again, audition process is, is really tough. You yeah. play to the top professors. Okay. You read all about them and you're wondering they're never going to take you in. Uh -huh. And it's not just playing. They uh, do a lot of ear tests. They okay. basically test your entire musical uh, knowledge. Right. And uh, your musicality. Okay. Uh, so it was a tough audition. Yeah. Uh, but thank God I got in. Yeah. And um, then I came back and went again in August. Wow. Uh, and I mean, life in London, like, you you know, during the break, you and I yeah, had a bit yeah, of a chat. Yeah. And, you know, it's very, I mean, for somebody with your musical talent, mm -hmm. you know, the sort of culture and everything that you're exposed to in a country like that must be incredible. Yeah, it's incredible. But uh, it uh, also, I, I, for instance, I was in shock when I got there. Yeah. First of all, I was missing home so much. You kind of live on your own. Yeah, it's all tough. All that. <laughs> and plus, you're thrown into this pool of musicians who are brilliant. Right. Uh, they're um, really yeah. good. So you have to work hard. hard. Um, I mean, so do you credit that as, you know, part of your success as a sort of determination to, you know, work really, really hard? Because throughout the interview, you've kind of stressed on the fact to achieve what you've achieved, you, yeah, you have, have to, to put in hard. the hours. I mean, uh, we're all human. I, I too <laughs> get lazy at times. And, you know, I'm d delaying on deadlines, things like that. But the good thing is that I was only focusing on music. Right. I went there to study music and, and I had is, to do yeah. that. So even the hostel I used to stay at yeah. had like practice rooms with pianos. Okay, so, so you book your, it, like everybody wants a piano to yeah. practice. So you just have to focus on that and work really hard. Yeah. And of course there are amazing concert opportunities. Yeah. You listen to other pianists, other musicians. There are so many other activities, not just performing, accompanying singers. Yeah. That was also one of the places where I got a lot of experience accompanying so many singers. Wow. That so, sounds incredible. It yeah, sounds it was really a great experience. I wish I could go back there again. <laughs> but we moved on. So Andrew, tell us a little bit about the SARC, um, you know, cultural center that, that Okay. You know, and um, what you're doing as there. you know, the Secretariat um, is uh, based uh, in Kathmandu. Right. And uh, what they have now done is establish regional centers yeah. for different areas in all the member states, South okay. member states. So Sri Lanka has um, taken culture over. Yeah. So Sri Lanka Wonderful. is the regional center for culture, and we are in charge of culture within all the member states. Okay. So, wow. you know, it's amazing, yeah. the different cultures, but culture, it, there is unity among diversity. Right. Yeah. So that kind of theme is what we're working on this year. Okay. And uh, we kind of promote culture in the region. Give us an idea of what a typical day is like for you at work. <laughs> is there such a thing as a typical day? Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm a late night bird, so I can't okay. sleep early. <laughs> okay. So no matter what time I come, I go to sleep only around 1.32. Okay, wow. And then I get up rushed because <laughs> I'm late eventually. And uh, like a well, typical day at home would be nobody talks to me in the morning. Okay, I this is your time. Then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so my mom's like, when do I talk to you? Because you don't have time for this. <laughs> so I rush to work and then yeah. it's like... Uh, going through the programs with the others. A uh, yeah. lot of planning to be done because right. it involves so many other countries. Yeah, so you have to plan imagine. well ahead. You have to make sure there's participation in the different programs. Yeah. A lot of issues like that. Yeah. And also throughout the day, while dealing with office work, there's an occasional call with regard to one of my other commitments. So yeah. it's, it's always kind of juggling around two things. And then sometimes I, I'm called to lecture on certain topics. So okay. I have to prepare for that as well. Yeah. So, so it's say, really non-stop. Yeah, it is non-stop, non -stop. but thankfully I enjoy what I'm doing. Yeah. And I think that's the essence to anyone. As long as you enjoy your work. It doesn't feel yeah, like work. Yeah, exactly. Ugh. And I think what happens to me is when I actually don't have anything to do, which is very rare, yeah. then I kind of feel anxious. And Something's uh, missing, yeah, you know, exactly. I need to be doing so something. So that's when I'm not quite okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that would be work. Then I come back and I'm 
either going straight in for a rehearsal okay. or I'm quickly changing and going for either orchestra or the girls come home for a rehearsal yeah. or we have an assignment or we have a performance. Wow. So when I come back, it would be about 10, 30, 11. My goodness. And then, and then of course, I relax, I de-stress <laughs> by watching some program on TV. <laughs> And then I go to bed. Yeah. Okay. Right, well on that note, we're going to take another little break. But for all of you at home, don't go anywhere. We've got a lot more coming right up with Soundry. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to ECV Power Women. Um, Soundry, I'm going to ask you a little bit about your personal life now. Um, what were you like as a child? I mean, apart from this sort of burgeoning passion for music, mm -hmm. um, what, what else, you know, what else other sort of hobbies and habits did you have? Habits? <laughs> sure, my parents and brother will have enough to say on that. I guess, uh, again, I, I always wanted to do things, so the drive, like you mentioned, was yeah. always there. And uh, I must say, I've got a very supportive family, yeah. right from my grandfather, who's no more, right. to my parents and my brother. Yeah. So they've always l let me do kind of what I want. To so I would say way. I've been a spoiled child. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, maybe even very stubborn, because if I wanted to have something, I Just wouldn't said, take no it. for an answer. Okay. And I still remember my father used to get very angry because I used to always talk back. Okay. Just, uh, maybe that's the lawyer in me. Come <laughs> but uh, I was never happy unless I had the last right, word. Right, okay. It was your way or yeah, the highway, so exactly. to speak. Exactly. <laughs> so I would recall that my childhood being a kind of a happy childhood, be thanks to my supportive family. Yeah. Also a lot of music because I was also so involved with church, choir. Yeah. Um, my mother teaching, she still does. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, I did spend a lot of time with my family and also some good friends along Super. the way. And tell us how you met your husband. Okay. <laughs> Was it so, sort of love at first sight or, um, you know, did it take a while? <laughs> yeah, he, my husband's also distantly related to me right, okay. and he's an Indian, so yeah. he was like my good friend for a very long okay. time. Boy. And it was, yeah, and then that friendship obviously matured into something more. Mm. And uh, of course it was always a long distance relationship. Right. And yeah. uh, some say it's still a long distance yeah. marriage because he is a full time musician in India. Wow. And I'm a musician here. Yeah, yeah. So it's, he's been very patient and kind with me. And he's never told me to give up everything yeah. and just come there. Yeah. And it's not fair for me to say the same to him. Yeah. So, I mean, who knows? We're just taking it one day at a time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's a very understanding person. So this long distance friendship, like I said, matured. I used Blossoms to go to uh, India quite often because yeah. my mom's originally from India. Right. So we also got to meet quite a lot. Okay. And then, of course, I kept putting off marriage because I said, okay, I need to do my law degree. Yeah. And I said, okay, now I need to do my master's. Okay. <laughs> uh, and he was patient through it all. We got married three years ago. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's, it's been good. You know, what do you do to kind of de-stress apart from watching sort of TV and chilling uh, I mean just you know what do you do when you have my, time for yourself? Yeah, my friends complain saying that I don't have time, time for, them. for them. The thing <laughs> is when I do have free time even then I have something to do in right. relation to music. I okay. listen to new repertoire for the choir. Yeah. We also listen to a lot of um, um, music that's different okay. and then try to put our own arrangement right. to it. Okay. So listening to it coming up with arrangements yeah. and basically I feel my mind's always working with plans. Okay. Um, so I wouldn't say I. But you have time to. Time to yeah. Chill. But then, mm. yeah, the only time I get where I don't have, say, shows for three days and don't have work, yeah. then I go to India. And, and so time that would husband. be relaxation time, maybe. <laughs> um, what would you say is the most sort of strange or, you know, different type of music that, that you've taken and, and sort of done a different arrangement with. I well, mean, you know, have you sort of... There's some of the pop okay, moving yeah. into rock numbers. Okay. That, you know, all the girls are young. Yeah. The choir, I think the youngest is about 16. The eldest is about 29, 30. Right. So they do come up with these ideas. And yeah. Like, Let's do something different. So sometimes I'm reluctant, but okay. then, uh, you know, it has been a challenge. Yeah. And, and it must be, yeah. It works. I mean, we recently did 21 guns, but that's okay. a nice number. Yeah. It came out well as a choral yeah. arrangement. 
and then also sometimes ethnic music okay um, fusion yeah try to do something different and put it into a kind of choral style it does not always work we try to make it. Gospel has been a speciality of ours. Yeah. We were, while I was studying law, I also I miss music so much. I used to go to the music school, which was just next door, and I met this amazing personality. He's a gospel conductor, okay. Professor Mark Wilson. And then I realized that we weren't actually singing gospel, although yeah. we thought we were, because it's an entire different style. Right. A lot of rhythm, a lot of soul. Yeah. So we got him to come here and train us. Oh, wow. So he's been coming three years in a row now. Yeah. So we, that is another new kind of um, field. Sort of field that branched, we, yeah, you, you exactly. guys are branched out yeah. into. All right, so Sandhvi, coming up, we've got actually, I think, my favorite part of the show, which is where we've spoken to some of your friends and colleagues and family, yeah. and they've given us a little insight into who you really are. Um, okay. it's <laughs> you know, everyone says that, but it's yeah. actually, it's really generally really oh. lovely and I think you'll be very touched. So all my secrets are going to come <laughs> <laughs> Well, we hope so. <laughs> so for all of you watching at home, don't go anywhere because we've got the confession camera coming right up after this short break. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Power Women on ETV, your lifestyle channel. Soundry, like I said earlier, my favorite part of the show. Um, so why don't we just get straight into it and see okay. what they have to say about you. <laughs> oh, Soundry, um, I would say, is a very passionate and determined woman and very sensitive to what is around her. So she picks up whatever she can, in a nice way, of course, uh, from her surroundings and I think that is uh, a plus point for her because not only her what would you say her passion but it's also that she is aware of things around her and her imagination also plays a big role in her life and she loves to dream so that she would always think of the, the highest that one could reach and she would always like to take people with her. Her success has been um, gradual because since I've known her as one of my students and who was doing her diplomas with me, um, she has gone very, very far, not only with her piano music, but I think, again, because she's so versatile, she's been able to make use of her voice and uh, take a, a bunch of girls from school uh, to the heights of being able to reach uh, goals at the Olympics. She's a very loving and caring person. I think she's very affectionate to the family as well as to her husband as well. She's a very stubborn character. And I think she normally if she sets a goal, she will somehow achieve the goal. And she works towards it and she'll get everyone who is involved in achieving that also to work towards her goal and achieve it. Mm, it was fun. We have had many fights as well. Sometimes we are not spoken for even three, four months as well. But in the end after that we get together and now I think we are really close more than before. We are really uh, close to each other. We share a lot of information. I think she's a, even though she's a very affectionate person and all that, she's very scared to doctor. Even if she goes to a doctor, she tells the doctor, I won't do any tests. I won't go for, uh, no one can in give me injection or anything. If you can cure me with medicines, you can cure me. I think she's really great, but um, very, very concerned about everyone in the family. She, that's her main thing. She wants us, the parents, as well as the brother, to be, she cares for us really, very well. One thing is about her is what she says we have to do, you know. Whatever said and done, she will somehow the other make us do what she needs. One fine day we found her at the age of four, sitting on the piano stool and playing all the pieces that I teach the little children. That was all on her own. That was when we found out that she was talented in music. Um, Sandri David to me um, is an amazing, wonderful, phenomenal woman and um, I feel very 
drawn to her because of her philosophy on life and how she looks at life and success and achievements. And what I really like about her is because um, she has the ability to think beyond the current circumstances. For example, when, when I first met her, I was in school and I was a member of the school choir and she was a director of the choir. And at that time, I hadn't heard of any school that, was, that had dreams of going abroad to sing and to tour. And that's how she was. And I was thinking, wow, this is amazing. And also, we are a bunch of women. You know, uh, we are in the 21st century, but I know that I won't be wrong if I say that uh, men and women, women don't have equal opportunities. And um, she does not see that as a barrier. You know, she feels that we are a bunch of capable people, not uh, just women and uh, we can set out um, to achieve whatever we want to. So I think those are defining characteristics of Zandri. It's a lovely, lovely thing. And true, yeah, I am very stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> and I am scared of going to the doctor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we... And I can't say no to people. <laughs> <laughs> but I think very, very touching things. Yeah, just... right. And uh, Auntie Ramya, I think she is a great person herself, and she's yeah. my role model. And, uh, of late, she's been a friend to me as well. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Which is very special. <laughs> right. Well, we've got to take another little break. Um, but when we come back, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you a series of questions where you've just got to. I you have know, no choice. You have no choice. You just have to answer them. <laughs> I try. <laughs> right. Well, we'll see you after the break with the dreaded ten. So don't go anywhere. Hi, and welcome back to the final segment of UCV Power Women, uh, the bit where I get to put Soundry on the spot and ask her some, some questions that she's dreading, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure you'll be fine. Question number one. What if you woke up and found you were deaf? Uh, what would you do? Well, you know one of the famous composers, Beethoven, got deaf to yeah. in the latter part of his life. So even in that situation, um, sure God will give me some kind of uh, way in which I could uh, still continue still with my music. music because I would not be living without my music. <laughs> and I always believe that there's a way and with God's help of course you can work around any circumstance. What would you say, what piece of music inspires you repeatedly? I mean really... Uh, it actually varies based on my mood swings. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, gospel music inspires me yeah. a lot and on the classical side of it, uh, it's a romantic composers. Okay. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, who's the greatest singer the world has ever known? There are so I many. Really it's a hard. There are so many. Yeah. And again, it depends on the repertoire. You know, I like some singers for some of the repertoire that okay. I sing. Uh, like even people like Josh Groban appear to yeah. me because anyone who can move the soul, uh, in my yes. opinion. Uh, can be considered answer. as one of the greatest. What would you say is your biggest regret? Um, not uh, pursuing a career in entertainment law abroad because there are so many opportunities yeah. and it kind, of link, it kind of links you up with musicians yeah. uh, and something that I think I would have enjoyed doing full time. But then again, no regrets at this end. Yeah. I enjoy what I'm doing. So I wouldn't call it a regret, but it's one of those what if questions yeah. which I right. don't yeah. know the answer. Are you moody in the way some musicians are? Big time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my parents will guarantee, my husband will, my brother will. Even the members of the choir. So yes, I am. What is the one thing that you can say has made you the woman you are today? faith in a higher being, uh, I can't say one thing, okay. uh, and uh, family support yeah. and uh, yeah, those two things actually. Where would you say, where does law and music meet? Uh, the law, the areas I've chosen, the music yeah. does part, is a part of especially copyright law. Yeah. Other than that, I actually, I haven't uh, analyzed it that. to figure okay. out a connection, <laughs> but in my area of law, yes. yes. Um, how would you or how do you deal with internal politics within your own group? Uh, like I said, we are, we've grown together a lot. We've yeah. been through a lot of difficult situations yeah. in terms of fundraising, uh, falling ill when we were on tour, like one of the girls 
work out with chicken pox oh, and God. you know stress a lot of situations that have made us closer yeah. at the same time we realize that all of us from my self on we've got our unique characters yeah. we do have our mood swings we have our negative so we've just learned to understand each other right. and uh, basically in my terms coordinating schedules and all that yeah. is really tough but i there's a lot of patience involved and i think with marriage i've accumulated that good quality <laughs> Uh, yeah, patience is one way I try to deal with uh, politics, but we try not to let politi- politics affect the music. Okay. And music uh, comes above it all. Are there times when you turn into a monster? <laughs> uh, I guess yes, uh, but uh, of late not very often. Okay, <laughs> good. And um, what would you say is your greatest achievement? See, whatever I do brings in a lot of uh, uh satisfaction yeah. to myself and it's i don't know it's kind of very emotional so I, mm-hmm. i don't view it as success but achieving what i want to achieve it's like okay i've got it like for yeah. instance my masters i always wanted to yeah. and it brings in a sense of pride that i worked through very difficult situations to get there yeah. so, but i really wouldn't want to pinpoint uh, one big thing as an achievement Well that was it. Oh, Those are the 10 questions done <laughs> answered beautifully. And for all of you watching at home, uh goodbye for now. We've come to the end of our season. And um, thank you very much for being a wonderful audience. Um we will be back with a new season sometime later this year. So for more information on that and for any bits of the show that you've missed or bits of the season that you've missed, you can always log on to our website uh, at www.etv.lk. Log on the Power Women um portion of that. And once again thanks very much and very sad to say goodbye but we will see you soon.